I am Christopher Folken, and I am one of the leads at the Welcome Center in Minneapolis. Wow. And my first memory ever is standing in a Toys R Us with my mother staring at a wall of she action figures. Welcome to Childhood Chat Cast with the Dude. I'm the Dude, and as usual, I'm joined by Jake. Hey, Jake. Hey, dude. And we're going to take a deep dive into the kid experts here at Children's Minnesota's Childhoods to find out what makes us all the same. Because, hey, we were all kids once. And as a twist, I am going to try to guess their birthday. Their birthdays? Their exact birthday, the date and year. So join us in the time machine I built out of cardboard boxes and duct tape, and let's meet our guest. Hey, dude. Hey, Jake. Have you noticed the world is just doing a lot of cross-pollinating of different things, mm-hmm. such as pop singers and country albums? or Uh-huh. I know who you're talking about. Or UFC fighters and movies. Mm-hmm. I know who you're talking about. Or even, like, fruit on top of some of your favorite foods. I mean, yeah. Are you kidding me? I went to this restaurant the other day, and on the menu, mango sliders. Yeah, mango burgers. Gross. Speaking of cross-pollination, that was something that was brought up when we were talking with our guest about what kind of toys we played with growing up. That different kinds of brands, different kind of characters, different sizes of toys would all kind of come together in our self-made worlds. Let's turn it over to Mr. Christopher Falcon. All right. Well, welcome, Christopher. Um, welcome to the podcast. <laughs> you talk about your first memory. Were you big into toys, like figures and things like that? Like action figures? Very. Okay. Me too. You were, Jake. I was, uh, yeah, absolutely. And especially now that you say the She-Ra figures, like how much of a commodity those were mm-hmm. back in the day, the both the He-Man and the she Oh, and- She-Ra was like the female He-Man, yeah. right? Like she was buff and had friends and was his, her- his sister. His sister, yeah. yeah. Oh, uh-huh. his sister. Mm-hmm. Princess Aurora. Mm-hmm. Adora. Oh, Adora. Adora. Wow. Sorry, everybody. Don't be sorry. It's something to be proud of. No, Actually, no, it's a badge of honor. That's that's impressive. <laughs> Thank you. Um, siblings? Yes, I have an older brother, two years older. Awesome. So did you guys like play action figures together? You're pretty close in age, or did you have different interests? We did play together. It rarely lasted very long because he was older and therefore smarter and would beat me at everything, and that became tiresome. Even as a child. <laughs> so, so like you're around kindergarten-ish. Um, what would you go and do then? You're like, I don't want to play. I keep losing. Or he's always so strong. Or blah. What would you go then? Did you go create your imaginary worlds with your action figures? A hundred percent, yeah. yeah. The introvertism hit pretty early in age where I was like, I can do this on my own. I right. don't need my brother. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Cardboard boxes. Yes, uh, uh, constructing like, things you know out of exactly nothing. Where I'm going yeah. With that. yeah, yeah. A tissue box became a car. Yeah, yep. a cereal box became a fortress. You know, anything and everything that you could literally tear apart and make into something else. It was always interesting the storylines you would come up with when you ended up cross pollinating different action figures. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. where it's like, oh no, look out, Princess Adora! Here comes GI Joe from G. Uh, Joe Land and right. just trying to make stories out of all of those was always so much fun. The G.I. Joes and the Star Wars figures, they, when they cross-pollinated with mm-hmm. He-Man people, I made them like really strong, small people, oh. right? Like they were, they had special, <laughs> like, they were strong like, so they could like pick up He-Man and throw them. Like they were something straight out of Gulliver's Travels right. type of thing. The Laputians. Yeah. Yep. Got you. Got you, He-Man. Let's talk about starting school. And so what town did you grow up in? St. Paul and slash Roseville, Minnesota. Oh, that's home. Mm-hmm. Home base. Mm-hmm. Folks still there? No. M- mom lives elsewhere. Student. A good student then? Smart? What was your subject? What, did, what were you drawn to in school? Yes. My shoes were of the goody variety. I was very much a rule follower. Leonardo was my favorite Ninja Turtle. If that's any indication, no one likes him. I'm I liked him. Okay, so good. The other thing good. that explains why you and I are pretty good friends. Yeah, forward. yeah. <laughs> Rules are important, mm-hmm. and that's how we have order. I sat up, had good posture, raised my hand, never left the room. All the things. 
Never got in trouble? If I did get in trouble, it was not my fault, and I was blackmailed. The Leonardo in me says, I'm pretty sure that wasn't me. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And friends, did you, were you drawn? <laughs> did you have like a best friend? I Mine changed every year. I had a different best friend every year. It wasn't until much later that I had a best friend um, who we would like go over to his pool and go swimming and pretend we were anything but regular kids. And if it came to an art project, then I was everybody's best friend. Everybody Why wanted is that? To, I like to draw and I'm pretty good at it. Oh, that yes, you are. You are indeed an illustrator. So I was very popular for those projects. We'll just kind of light your jump into the nowadays. You are a good illustrator you specialize is it like superhero type stuff i do really like superhero stuff okay yes. so let's go back to back to where we were five six seven or so right mm -hmm. what were the superheroes that you were latched on to because super to me it didn't feel like superheroes really who became a big thing until the late 70s the superman richard uh donner film right is that am i right jake yeah donner, then, the 78 donner film superman when it first came out like it was such a big thing because there wasn't many mainstream yeah. action films i mean there was the the george reeves tv show and the adam west batman right but we never had anything like large-scale superheroes just uh cartoons cartoons yeah was it so who are your go-tos then? And, and when comic books, of course, mm. too. But My mom would take us to the Mr. Movies a video rental store, and I would rent the VHS tape of Pride of the X-Men every week because we would have a regular movie night, and I would watch that, and they didn't want to watch it, but it was you know a cartoon, so it was 30 minutes, <laughs> and I would watch it endlessly for hours when I was allowed to use the TV. Did you have a favorite X-Men? At the time, my favorite X-Man was Storm. She oh. could control the weather. Mm -hmm. Halle Berry. It, yep, also known as Halle Berry. And also Cyclops, who, again, was the Le the Boy Scout. He was the Leonardo of the mm -hmm. group. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Also in blue and yellow. And he had to wear those special glasses. Mm -hmm. And everyone in my family had glasses, and I was always jealous, which is a silly thing to be jealous of. But at the time, when you feel like the odd one out, you're like, I want to have the glasses, too. Right. Uh, did you ever have to go to the hospital? Do you remember a trip? Did you ever get hurt and have to be treated? I do remember going to the hospital for having fallen. This is a, probably a very common injury. Falling on your chin on ice and having to get stitches like on the oh, sure. on the end of your yep. chin. Yep. You still have a scar. Uh huh. That's cool. That's Thanks. cool. Yeah. That is cool. <laughs> I'm tough. Very cool. <laughs> yeah. Not only does everybody like you, you're super tough. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm indestructible. Okay, so what are we watching? When you were a kid, was there Saturday morning cartoons? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you remember some of the ones you watched? I mean, I did watch He-Man and She-Ra extensively. I also really enjoyed... Wait, do you remember the theme song? Of he so, so, yes. There was a movie that came out in theaters called The Secret of the Sword, which is what introduced the character of She-Ra. And I remember going to the movies with my mom and my brother and they gave you a free comic book, and it basically illustrated the whole movie in a comic book form. And then there was a cassette tape that I would play over and over and over again that was the song for that film. So again, going back to obsessively playing things over and over again, I, I would do that in my living room and draw pictures of She-Ra all day long. Was the, the main bad guy in She-Ra, was that Hordak? That is correct. Okay. Yeah. Wow. I didn't go that deep with He-Man. I was a G.I. Joe kid because mm -hmm. I loved all the different characters. The biggest thing about He-Man was it was the action figures. I mean, you if you could find He-Man action figures at that time, they were the cat's meow. Yeah. Seemed like all of them were the same except for the head and the paint jobs. Yes. Lots of just swapping out heads. That's all it really was. Or in the case of Jira, it was just different colored hair. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. <laughs> still needed them all. Hey, do you still have them? No, okay. no, absolutely not. All right. They probably went out in a garage sale at some point. Right. Do you remember a movie going experience that was like, ooh, I want to be in a movie theater? Because I take you for a movie, like a little bit of a cinephile. Is that correct? I do enjoy film. Yes. I have another distinct memory of being at a JCPenney and begging my mother to let me have the plush ducky from The Land Before Time. For whatever reason, I looked at that character and I thought, you're me. I get I you I feel represented in film. <clears throat> now wow. that you say that I see it, I uh -huh. totally see the ducky. Yeah. Yep. Land before time. Dinosaurs, right? Yep. yep. Okay. Littlefoot. Don Bluth. 
Don Bluth. Sad movie, but also beautiful. They made 14 of those. Really? Yeah. yeah. Have you seen all of them? No. Okay. <laughs> okay. That little foot just never learned. <laughs> now we're getting a little older. Did you get into sports at all? My parents tried. I was uh, removed from a soccer team for doing cartwheels. It seems like a valuable thing to actually have for that a soccer seems, yeah. Yeah. team. Thanks. Little League didn't hit either because I wouldn't catch the ball. You you wouldn't or couldn't? I would run from the ball. So you did so you didn't. Yeah. So you, yes. yeah, you wouldn't catch yes. the ball. They say wouldn't, I say saving my life. Yeah. From devastation. Baseball was a tough one for me too. It wasn't just playing catch because I, I had an older brother growing up too, and we played catch all the time. So like catching was fine. It was when somebody's uh however many 40 feet away or 30 feet away, throwing it at me as hard as they can. Mm-hmm. And all I have to defend myself is a very thin little stick. Yeah, that I'm supposed that to feels hit. mean. Yeah. Right. It still feels mean to me. So, yeah. <laughs> so if the idea of baseball was to stay as far away from the ball as you possibly could, you would have been an all-star. I mean, maybe. I, I would. I probably wouldn't throw it back. We probably just keep it. Like, Actually, well, your sport now. would have been dodgeball then. Yeah, right. Yeah. Mm. Chris, Christopher, yeah. Chris, Chris, forget the ball. Yeah, it's over there. It, y- 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 y'all get yeah, it later. Found it's, it. It's fine. There it is. You're well, welcome. I see it. And now a cartwheel for yeah. everyone. Yeah. yeah. Behold my gymnastics prowess. So sports you tried and you just wouldn't. Let's just say you wouldn't. Yeah. Loosely tried. Yeah. And then how about music? Up. Music. I enjoyed music, but I was oddly, going back to the movie thing, I didn't understand the concept of music unless it was in conjunction to movies. Oh. So I had lots of soundtracks that I would ah. listen to. Best soundtrack ever. What do you think? Oof, gosh. Now, I, soundtrack as an original score like John Williams or soundtrack like all these great songs like Forrest Gump? Right. Oh, man. Jake, does one stick out for you? I always loved the Can't Hardly Wait soundtrack. Just because it had such a variety of different music on it. Third Eye Blind was on there. Missy Elliott showed uh-huh. up on there as well. A couple of kind of unknown bands with Dog's Eye View. It's a great little put together soundtrack for a fun movie. Cool. I really love the Bodyguard soundtrack. Yeah. Of course. One of the best selling ever, right? Whitney yep. Houston's Pretty Wild. Mm-hmm. Good gal. I've got nothing. Mm-hmm. Nothing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. Very good. Thank you. One of my favorites is Fargo. I think the music is some of the most powerful music there is. It's like, remember that opening sequence in the car that's driving in the middle of nowhere and that music starts to swell and it's, I don't know. I, I love it. I, it sets, it totally sets the tone for the whole movie. Fargo's soundtrack. Totally. Just, it, it brings you in the eerie moments. Eerie. Yeah. It's, it's a really good one to throw on. What were some of your other interests? Did you start drawing a lot in middle grade school? Did that really kind of take off for you then? Yeah, yeah, lots more drawing. The more media that I would consume, the more inspired I was to draw superheroes and or people in action doing heroic acts. Blonde women (laughs) with weapons in particular seems to follow me throughout my adolescence, and I became obsessed with Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and that became a big part of my identity around that age, yeah. When it came to drawing, were you more of a copy what you see or more of a freehand what's in my mind type of thing? Yes. My answer is yes. On both ends? Yeah. Column A, column B. Mm -hmm. Now, were you kind of a crayons or colored pencils or paints? Paint is a hard medium to work with, and I'm a much more needing control over things type of person. So it was largely pen and ink and pencil and Okay. Markers and things like that. Nice. Was there a particular type of pencil that you like to use or pens that you like to use more than not when drawing? I enjoyed mechanical pencils because you didn't have to constantly sharpen them. Mm -hmm. Everyone was always pushing me to be more of a purist with graphite pencils. And I was like, nope, this side just click. (laughs) This is easier. I remember when I would journal, I would only use mechanical pencils, kind of for that same aspect type of thing. Mm -hmm. I always felt like people who can draw good, it comes to them naturally. Did it come naturally to you or did you just draw and draw and draw and just get really, really good at it? Drawing from a very young age and my mom tells me that my dad was very active artistically. So she thinks that it was inherited mm. skill. I don't know if, if that's a thing. I'm assuming that like like with musicians, when they have kids, sometimes they become incredible singers and things like that. Mm-hmm. So maybe it's partly that, but they did put me in classes too. Okay. So you got to really develop that skill. Music records were it when i first started listening 
mm-hmm. and then eventually tapes. But I remember getting, it was Michael Jackson's thriller that completely changed the direction of my life. And it wasn't just because it was him. It was because, wow, this is the kind of music I like. I mean, I still think Billie Jean might be top 10 greatest songs of all time. It's just mm. incredible. That's just by the mechanics of it. What was the music for you that was like, ooh, this is what I like. This is me. We actively listened to Thriller every Halloween uh, using a record player that we had. So that's that definitely resonates with me. Michael Jackson was a phenomenon. Being raised by a single mom, she would play a lot of the divas at that time. Lots of Celine Dion in my house. And she also loved playing Olivia Newton-John, which was less my bag. I do love a big belter. I love an upper register user. So Whitney Houston, obviously, we mentioned her. Luther Vandross. I wasn't a fan. I didn't listen to him. But I hear him now. It's like, oh, wow. Okay. There's a really famous meme or a little short clip where Whitney Houston and Luther Vandross are singing together. And Whitney tries to kind of out do it. And then Luther Vandross goes, he does this thing. (laughs) And it's like, oh, he's just saying, Whitney, not today, honey. Um, Seeing competition like that is very, very amusing. (laughs) Yeah. Celine, Whitney, who else is a belter? Mariah Carey. Mariah, Bette, Midler. Mm Mm-hmm. Let's go back to the social part of it now. We're like junior high-ish, okay? Mm. Academically, how are you? Good. But at the, at the stage of my development, I have discovered friends in a more serious capacity. So the grades did get less. And by less, I mean like Bs. Okay, so you were an A. Yeah. And then you you know reach that age of pressure, and then you're like, yeah, you can cheat off of me. <laughs> <laughs> Just be my friend. Oh, Sure. You also get into that moment where it's like, yeah, homework's kind of important, but I'd rather hang out with my friends in this situation type of thing. Yeah. Yeah, I know that all too well. Mm -hmm. Sure. How did you get around before you got a license? Did you ride a bike? I didn't. I mean, I guess my mom would have to drive me around. Oh, but my brother was older. So when he got a car, he was all too eager to drive anywhere. (laughs) Sure. Just a reason to get behind the wheel. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, so your friends, you're starting to get social and you're bribing them by letting them cheat off of you. Um, Yeah. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) I'm thrilled about everyone hearing this. (laughs) I I think the more of that happens than we Mm. probably realize. Mm -hmm. But now, you know, the halls of high school are kind of knocking. And I always say, I think we've said this before, that the difference between junior high and high school is... Night and day. It is a brand new life. You're just sort of inching towards adulthood, but yet you're just still a kid, right? Mm -hmm. You think you know. Did you kind of go through all that, experiencing that as you got older? Like, I'm indestructible. and (laughs) You know, I was, like I said, very goody two-shoes. So I was very abundantly aware that I was very destructible. (laughs) So I was always like, no, we can't do that. We could get hurt if there was ever the concept of danger around that. So no, I was very dull in that regard. (laughs) Sorry. That's okay. I wish I was. I wish I had a friend like you. (laughs) Me me too. Oh my gosh. Me too. You could have copied off of me. It wouldn't have done you well, but you could have copied off of me. You're welcome. Thank you. In high school then, are you still kind of the same kid that you have always been? Did you feel like you ever went through like a metamorphosis and changed from junior high to high school? Or even when you were younger, it seems like while you got older and wiser and et cetera, you were kind of just this even keeled kid throughout. You didn't rattle anyone's cages. You didn't break any rules. You were, hey, that's good. Would you say that that's consistent? And are you still that way now? I would say now I question things more. I'm still very much inclined toward rules and order, but I I definitely find myself questioning things that I grew up knowing or being told was correct or normal or acceptable, challenging societal expectations, things like that. Well, dude, Ah, now is the time. We are going to try and find out Chris's birthday, the day, the month, and the year, based off of some of the clues that he gave us in the interview today. Things to think of. She-Ra. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, particularly Leonardo. Mm -hmm. Thriller. Celine Dion, Mariah Carey, and other artists. Saturday Saturday morning cartoons. Saturday morning cartoons. Well... 
I think that the information that you gave about your life, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> where thank, I think, thank you, where I, <laughs> where I think you are, I think younger than what you kind of gave me. Like, does that make sense? Um, like, Thriller was like 1983. And either you were really, really young then, or you're listening to Thriller five years after. This is where I'm at, okay? This is me kind of like... I'm also going by... It's a good point. I've been here 16 years. You were already working here. And I know for a fact you were probably in your 20s. Like, that doesn't narrow it down at all. But I think you were pretty young when you started here. I'm pulling up my calculator Excellent. Okay, because I'm really bad at... Math? Yeah. That'd be me. Yes, hello. I'm really bad at saying the word math. Okay, I'm putting in... Four. And then how old I think you are, and then I'm going to go for the birth date, okay? So I'm going to do it. I'm just doing a... I haven't done this because you're really hard. You're really a challenge. This is the hardest one, I think, so far. Okay, I'll try. Um, I'm getting... Summer birthday. I don't know why. I'm going to say June 17th, 1984. Incorrect. Oh, no. man. I knew it. This was going to be hard. Is it a summer? It's not. Oh, jeez. It's spring. Okay. Yeah. So you have one coming up. What's your birthday? My birthday is Tuesday. Uh, just Tuesday. Every no, Tuesday. <laughs> every Tuesday. I'm wow. very old. You look fantastic. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. My birthday is April 2nd, 1982. Oh. Okay, can I just say something? Please. Or mime it so that no one knows. I'm pulling up my phone on my calculator because Ooh. I put in 2024 and then how old I thought you were, and I went against what I came up with. Oh, it says 1982. It does. It says 1982 on the calculator. So, but I was off by a year in a few months, I guess. Yeah. That's not bad. It's I've done worse. I've done better. That's wild. I've been a little off, but I, I feel pretty good about it. Uh, good job. Definitely an 80s kid. That's what we kind of, right? Mm-hmm. For sure. Mm-hmm. All right. Well... Christopher, this has been awesome, man. Thank, Thank you, you so much. This I'm so great. glad that we asked you. you. You're one of the first people that patients and families see. You're the you're the first face of children's, and we couldn't be luckier to have somebody like you doing what you do. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for joining us for today's Childhood Chatcast brought to you by Buzzsprout. To get new and previous episodes of Childhood Chatcast, head over to starstudio.mn.org.